Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have my reading wrap up for you for the month of March. And I have been reading a fair bit. I've finished five books this month. I, For some reason this month I was trying to like focus in on reading a bit more. Um, and I still don't really read that many more books than I normally do, so that's kind of interesting. I'm like really close to finishing one more book. Probably like it will take me 30 minutes to an hour or something today to finish that one off, but it's not finished off yet. So let's talk through the books that I read. Five books, still not uh, unhappy with that whatsoever. My reading goal for this year is to read 52 books, which means one book a week. And I guess I read one more. So I'm a little bit ahead of my goal right now uh, at this point. I think actually I'm two books ahead according to Goodreads. I read 14 books so far this year. Nothing major, but still I'm like very happy with that amount of books. And I'm not like specifically choosing shorter books or longer books or anything like that um, when I'm picking my books. Because that's kind of defeats the purpose of having a reading goal in my opinion. Um, anyway, let's talk actual books. The first book that I read was uh, the second one in the series, uh, which was called The Bride Test. The series is The Kiss Quotient. And the first book is about an autistic girl this time around. And I thought like we were kind of going to see what would happen after that book uh, ends. But turns out instead of dealing with the girl again, we're dealing with the love interest's brother that was in the first book. As well like we saw a little glimpse of the guy right now he is our main character at least one of our main characters this guy is also autistic um it's it's interesting to see that there is like multiple autistic people that they can fit into the storyline but at the same time i like stories that do contain uh somebody that thinks like this especially if it's done well and i feel like this writer actually knows how to write about autistic people properly because she actually is uh somewhere on the spectrum herself but anyway this book itself is about Kai. Kai is an autistic guy who um, just feels like he he doesn't know how to deal with his feelings. He doesn't really know if he has any feelings, if he can love people, whatever. His mom, this is a Vietnamese family, um, of course, wants him to find a girl, get married, all of that. So his mom goes to Vietnam to find a girl for him. She meets Esme who is a girl that cleans right now. Um, she is not having the easiest life. And she asks us, mate, will you come to the US with me? Uh, meet my son and see if you guys can make it work. So as May says, yes, because that's what you do when a stranger asks you, will you move to the other side of the world just to see if you uh, might be interested in my son. Um, yeah, like throughout this story, of course, there is a little mis lot, of, lot of misunderstanding. Esme doesn't really speak English very well when she comes to the country. She doesn't really know what autism even means. Of course, when she meets this guy for the first time, the mother didn't say, oh, my son is autistic. So she does see that like some things that he does are not what she would expect him to do. But instead of knowing what might be causing that she of course just assumes that it's something that she does wrong or he doesn't actually like her all those type of things he also thinks he doesn't really like her because he doesn't know what it would even feel like to like somebody um and they have this date like they're either gonna figure out they like each other and get married at a certain date a couple of months later that part is kind of like not but i guess in different cultures these things are more common uh and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and this man will go back home to me like the conflict of having somebody that just doesn't fully understand their feelings in this way is very like believable so it made it a nice read it was not like they were not throwing in a lot of like weird things that would cause conflict that are not really like that, that don't really make sense that are not really that significant um so it was an interesting book. I liked reading it. Uh, it was a quick enough read as well. Um, I gave it four stars. And there is still one more book in the series, which I believe is about another family member somewhere again. Um, good to know now that we're not going to continue these stories. We're getting a new perspective, a completely new story, basically. Um, I've got to read that at some point, probably this year as well. 
Then the next book I read was The Wishing Game by Mac Schaefer. Schaefer? Schaefer? That's, we would not, yeah. Anyway, uh, Mac Schaefer. Uh, this one is about Lucy. Lucy is a, a teacher of eight uh, working in a school. She's 26 years old and she used to love these children's books when she was younger. And um, right now she is reading these books with one of the kids um, in the school that she has kind of a special relationship with. They keep talking about how she is going to adopt him at some point. But right now she is not in a position to be able to do that. So she just tries to help him out with things. Uh, kind of after school they sit together and talk through things and they kind of like fantasize about how it would be if they would be a family like a real family at some point but right now she's not at a stage in her life um she doesn't have the money she doesn't have like the, the right living space to be even allowed to adopt a kid the books that she was re reading when she was young were the clock island books uh written by jack masterson and all of a sudden they learn that there is this contest going on there like he always put like little riddles and things throughout his books that was how the mysteries like there were children in his books that solved certain mysteries and they did that through riddles by the clock master i don't know the guy that lived on clock island anyway um and now a riddle goes out as well and it's like okay only the people that know the answer to this riddle can come and they will get an invite and because she knows the answer to this riddle she gets to go and she gets to participate in a competition basically for a book that Jack wrote he hasn't been writing for a long time and now he wrote another book and they compete for like just getting the, the transcript for this book and they can do with it whatever they want uh, nobody else will get it if they manage to win the contest it's a cute book like it's a lot about like like it's partly I feel like found family as well it's partly um like getting to know yourself getting to like figure out what really makes you happy I guess um yeah and of course they like they go to Clock Island because it's a real island as well and that is where the competition takes place uh, it's, it's kind of a magical world for Lucy because she always read about it and she used to live like relatively close to where this clock island is when she was a kid as well. It's cute. It was a cute read. Uh, four stars for this one as well. And then I read Anatomy, a love story by Dana Schwartz. Um, this book I've seen a lot about as well. And what I thought was funny when I actually had the book in my hands for the first time I always thought that this was just a heart on the cover, but if you look closer, you see that it's actually a girl from the top and her dress is kind of spread out in a way so that from a distance it looks like a heart. I never noticed that, so it's just a little like fun thing uh, about the cover itself. This book is about, um, what's her name again, Hazel. Hazel is a girl that is growing up in 1817. She's a pretty, like she's from a pretty wealthy family. Um, and she has always wanted to be a surgeon when she grows up. Now in 1817, that is not really a uh, common thing for girls to want to do, uh, so it's not very socially accepted. So she tries to like sneak into this uh, class where one of the like major surge surgeons of that time is showing like how he operates on somebody and she wants to try and get into the school, but the school is only for guys. Then she manages to kind of come to an agreement with the teacher. She can sit the exam to be allowed to be a surgeon, but she cannot like attend the classes. Uh, there's something that happens before, but I don't want to give away too much. Um, so they come to this agreement. She studies, but of course, if you want to study like how to do proper surgeon things, you need bodies to do that with. Then we have Jack. Jack is our resurrection man. Resurrection man in this time apparently were people that dug people up from their graves when they had just been buried to serve as bodies for surgeons to practice on. Um, and our girl Hazel is paying Jack to get her some bodies as well. 
so she can practice for this exam. Uh, there is definitely some other things that happen in here as well. There is like random disappearances uh, and things and that is something that Hazel is trying to figure out as well. Like why is this happening? So it's a little bit of a like almost murder mystery type book while we're also following a girl who wants to be a surgeon and is operating on dead bodies. Um, there's illnesses that seem to be popping up that she kind of wants to figure out like what is causing them as well. So she wants to heal people as well when she can possibly. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed reading it. I gave it three stars because it didn't like pull me in too much. I was not like reading it, like really wanted to figure out what was happening. Some of the things I kind of predicted already, they were like what was happening. Um, Cause I feel like the foreshadowing made it a little bit too clear maybe what was coming. Um, but I still enjoyed it. I, I gave it three stars. I think I already said that. Then I read um, Sean O'Casey's three Dublin plays. These are plays that have been written a good long time ago um, about Dublin and the time that like the troubles were kind of going on in, in Ireland and Dublin specifically. So there's three plays that he wrote that you're reading through here, which is, I guess, kind of interesting to read through plays as well, because when he starts writing, there's different acts. So first you start, you get the names of the people and what their roles are. Then you get the description of what the stage looks like. Because of course you write that out so people can set it up properly as well. And then instead of like reading a story, you, you read what people say. Um, the interesting thing about the way that this is written as well is that it's written the way that people would say it. So it's written with a Dublin accent. Uh, including all the apostrophes where you kind of see that they're kind of swallowing letters and words and things. Um, th that was interesting. Now, I've lived in Ireland for eight years, so I'm definitely familiar with the accent. Uh, but reading it is a, is a different thing. <laughs> so, like, I constantly had to, like, read it as quickly as possible, basically. So, because normally you read one word, one word, one word. But when they're swallowing half of the letters, then if you read every single word, it doesn't make sense until you, like, the little bit... And then it's, it does make sense. Um, did I like fully enjoy reading this? Like these stories are not overly interesting. They're no way. They're interesting because they are about the times the troubles were happening, which is when like Ireland was fighting against uh, being suppressed by the UK. Um, so like the things that happen in it are kind of interesting to read about and you get the perspectives from like throughout these different plays from people that are living through it uh, so that is interesting with the way that they talk to each other and like the conversations that are happening it probably is just nicer to watch when it, you're watching the actual play because then you see stuff happening as well um, it's very it's mundane while they're going through like a civil war basically which is interesting um, so yeah interesting not a book that I would per se like go like, oh, it was the best book I've, I've read in a long time. I gave it three stars just because it was interesting. <laughs> I've said that too often now. Then lastly, I read uh, the second book in uh, a V.E. Schwab series, A Gathering of Shadows. This book is from the Darker Shades of Magic, pretty sure, series. Um, and since this is book two, I cannot go too deep into like what is happening, of course. Um, I can say that we're seeing some of our main characters from book one again. Uh, of course, Kel. Kel is our like one normal eye, one black eye, and Terry, who is able to like deal with different types of magic and um, like go from one world to another. Antares are a specific type of magician in this world that are able to travel from one world to another. In this, like, world, <laughs> there are five, four different Londons. Kel lives in Red London, which is kind of like a thriving, uh, full of magic type London. Then there is White London, Grey London, and Black London as well. And uh, Black London disappeared. Magic got too much there, and because of that, it kind of exploded, in a way. Um, that's not a spoiler from the first book because that already happened uh, when you start the first book as well. Then there is White London, which is kind of a suppressed type of uh, world. And then there's Grey London, which is a very like 
poor type of world and only red london is kind of the one where magic still really thrives this book most of the thing that we're that we're following is a contest that is going on they're in red london they are um having this contest where different parts of their world so the red worlds come together to compete there's magicians coming together and they compete against each other to see who the best magician is at that point in time um and through some tricks and things there are people that end up in that competition that of course are main characters in this book as well uh, we see Leela coming back, who is the girl that Cal runs into in book number one. We get a new character as well, which is Emery. Emery, or was it the last name? Alucard Emery, pretty sure, um, who is a captain on a ship, uh, which also is one of the main magicians in their competition. And also there is development in another London that um, you get little like pieces of information throughout like this book is about 500 pages i think about every like 100 pages or something you get a little glimpse at what's happening in a different london you know that it's probably going to interfere with what is happening here at some point um but you don't know how what where exactly and then this book ends on a cliffhanger and I don't like when books do that. Like, I get that this is a series and you want people to want to go for the next book, but I kind of want at least something to kind of be wrapped up while still keeping things open enough to, like, for somebody to want to read the second or the third book in a series. Uh, here we're like full on cliffhanger and I, I need to pick up the next book soon because I need to know what happens now. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I can give you. On this one because it's the second book in the series and i'm already talking way too much about only five books anyway that is it for today then i guess thank you guys very much for watching i hope to see you in one of my next videos bye bye